grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We want to look at the Old Testament lesson this day, recorded for us in the prophet Ezekiel chapter 2. Then God said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak to you. And the Spirit entered me when he spoke to me, and set me on my feet, and I heard him who spoke to me. And he said to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the church of Israel, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. For they are impudent and stubborn children. I send, am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, as for them, whether they hear or whether they refuse, for they are a rebellious house. Yet they will know that a prophet has been among them. Here in God's text. Dear friends in Christ, how do you measure success in your life? Or how should we measure success in our life together in this congregation? There are many sources in the world that would describe for us what is the measure of success. Culture has a measure of success. Popularity is one of them. How many friends we have on Facebook? Or how many friends or people like us? That's a measure of success. Or fame. How many people have heard of us? or know about us, where we live, what we like, what we dislike, what we do for a living. Or honor. How many think of us when they think of people who are either successful or people who are moral? The world in which we live has many different definitions for success, whether it's popularity, whether it's fame, whether it's honor, or whether it has to do with how many goods we have, how many houses, how many cars, whether we have a vote or not, or whatever the case may be. You and I know that to be true. Even in the church, we sometimes have ways to measure success. You are a successful Christian because of your church attendance or your communion attendance. We are a successful church because we can't set everybody on the main floor. We have to use that floor. We are successful. Yeah, I saw you look to see where they all were. But anyway, the fact remains is that measure of success is whether we have a full congregation, whether we have a half a congregation, whether we have a fourth of a congregation, in the churchly world, that measure of success. Whether we can pack them in like Joel Osteen or have room for others such as you. Success in the church might be based on how, many, how much offering we get, what we can do, how much we drag in every Sunday from our parishioners so that we can take care of the organization or the church. Or success may be measured in the fact that how are we doing with the first chapter downtown? Or the ark on the freeway? How are we doing with those mega churches? How are we measure up? Even within our own synod with big mega churches, San Antonio and others. We live in a world that measures success either in the church or in society by a different standard than what our God does. Our lessons for today proclaim that God looks at things differently. God tells Ezekiel that success is measured in terms of faithfulness. It's not measured in terms of whether or not these people that God sent him to, the people of Israel, would repent. It is measured in the fact that he proclaimed the gospel faithfully, or should I say, the words which God gives him to do. That's success for Ezekiel. 
Not that everybody is strict to the heart and come back on hands and knees begging God for forgiveness. For in our gospel lesson today, Jesus experiences rejection in his hometown. Isn't this the carpenter's son? And now he's an itinerary preacher? Boy, I'll bet his family is proud of him, aren't they? Or even St. Paul in our epistle lesson. As we see that he learns to rest in the grace of God and to count on God's power, not on his own weakness. That success, trusting in God rather than in yourself or your goods or your notoriety or your abilities, God indeed looks at things differently than you and I when it comes to success. Success is built upon God and his word. Success for God is fulfilling our vocation that is part of God's plan to redeem the world. It is different from all of us and different for all of us. We are not all Moseses, we are not all Ezekiels, we are not all Jonas, we are not all Isaiahs, and we are not all Jeremiah. We are people who have been given vocations to operate in God's church as God has proclaimed it to us. And God's kind of success does not always lead to things that the world count as success. The hometown of Jesus considered him to be a failure because he claimed to be the Messiah. We are told later in Ezekiel that the people of Israel didn't listen to him either, or even in Jeremiah. They laughed at him when he said, we are going to be in captivity for a good long time. Success is not something that we depend on in this world, and God's success is the only thing that we can depend on. God's measure of his success is his saving you. God's measure and symbol of his success is the cross. The people of Jesus they expected the Messiah to win their political freedom from the Romans, but he didn't do that. For that, the people considered Jesus to be a failure. The cross is God's greatest success, for it accomplishes God's plan to redeem you and me and all who believe. The cross is where God shows his mercy to you and me in that he could have annihilated all of us. When he had the flood, he could have just said, that's it, and annihilated everything, but yet he said, Noah and his hand. He could have done away with everyone, but instead, he sent his son to die for you. The cross is the chief symbol of Jesus' success and around it, the whole Christian church gathers. For it is in the cross that God reminds us of his plan. And his plan is that he still loves you. That he still cares for you. You and I know that we deserve annihilation. And we do not deserve forgiveness. But yet, God's plan is to forgive. In the cross, it reminds us of God's success for us. Jesus was put to death for your sins and my sins, for the sins of all mankind. He was punished by his Father to the nth degree where he, his Father even turned his back on him. But yet, success is in the empty tomb that Jesus rose from the dead to eternal life. The cross reminds us of our calling. You are a Christian 
because of the cross of Christ. And just as the Ezekiel Christians tell other people about this good news, it is by this means that we are saved. It is by this means that God saves all believers. It reminds us also that even in our weakest, God uses us. God strengthens us, strengthens us, and uses us even in the greatest of ways through our weakness. The cross looks like failure to a lot of people in our world, but to those who are believing in Jesus, it is the symbol of success. Dear friends in Christ, how do you measure success in your life? By what you have? Or by the lack of what you don't have? How do you measure success in our life together in this congregation? By the numbers that we have? By the buildings we have, by the number of programs we have, by what is happening day after day. This place is happening. There's not a time that you can't come and nothing happening. Is it based upon the schedule or the lack thereof? How do we manage success? God's word redefines success and replaces our standards with him. And in God's word, there is comfort in the knowledge that our success, like that of Ezekiel, depends on God, not on us. You and I as Christians are asked to do one thing, and that is to be faithful. The minor prophet Michael in chapter 6, verse 8 says, He has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. That's God's measure of success for you and me and for his church. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all of human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus and the life everlasting. Amen. <laughs>